When we hear the teaching on karma, we usually think about past karma. Not only past karma in this lifetime, but previous lifetimes. And it seems something far away. Actually, we're creating karma all the time. Every time there's an intention in the mind, that's karma. Sitting here with your eyes closed, you're creating karma. Mental karma. So make it good. Because the mental karma is the attitude you bring to something, and that shapes everything you do. You need to practice making sure that whatever the situation, you're bringing something good to it. That's your contribution to the situation, both within you and with other people. In the teachings on dependent core rising, the Buddha talks about how intention, which is karma, is shaped by the process of fabrication. You put things together, sometimes on a subconscious level. Often, on a subconscious level, there's lots of layers of intentions going on in the mind that you're hardly aware of. When we meditate, we try to get quiet so we can see these and bring some more knowledge to them. Because if you fabricate these things out of ignorance, you're going to suffer. If you bring skill and awareness to the process of fabricating these things, it, can, it turns into a path, a path to the end of suffering. So, fabrication, what is it? You've got the breath coming in and out. That's bodily fabrication. There's an intentional element in how you breathe. So try to breathe in a way that creates a sense of well-being right now. Then there's verbal fabrication. Direct your thought and evaluation. So direct your thoughts to the breath. Evaluate the breath. Do you like this breath? If you don't, you can try another one. It's like trying on a different set of clothes. If you don't like this set of clothes, you change them for another one. You find something you like, then you wear it. And after all, you decide you don't like it anymore. Well, you can change. There's a wide range of possibilities in how you can evaluate the breath and make the breath comfortable and take that sense of ease that comes with the breath and think of it spreading around the body to get the most use out of it. Now, to do this requires perceptions which is mental fabrication. That goes together with feeling. You're creating feelings of ease with the breath, and it's all done by holding in mind a perception of the breath, preferably the breath as a full-body process. The whole nervous system is involved. In this way, there's a greater sense of ease that courses through the body. As you breathe in, breathe out, everything feels open up, everything feels connected. This is all karma, good karma, because you're bringing the right attitude to the present moment, realizing that you have some power to shape things in a good direction. And so you want to give the mind a good place to stay, so that it has the strength to do what it knows is right. Another way of bringing good karma to the present moment, a good attitude to the present moment, is developing thoughts of goodwill. This works in several directions. First, it creates a basis for skillful ideas in your mind so that when you're dealing with someone who's really difficult, you're much more likely to think of something that's good for them and for yourself. And it also has an impact on what's coming in from the past, as the Buddha said. It's not the case that we have to suffer tit for tat everything we've done in the past. There are certain potentials coming into the present moment, and what you water is going to determine what you experience. And the images of a field full of seeds. Some of the seeds are ready to sprout, some of them are not yet ready to sprout. So you try to find the ones that are ready to sprout, and you water them. You water the good ones. You don't know which ones are ready to spout, but if you recognize something good coming up in the mind, okay, encourage that. Goodwill is one of those things.
because when bad seeds come up, regardless of what you're doing right now, and some of them will, you have a broader state of mind. They don't have that huge an impact. As the Buddha said, it's like someone who's very wealthy who's fined for a crime. If you've got a lot of wealth, the fine doesn't really matter. It's like those banks that make billions and billions. You find them a billion or so, and it doesn't really have any impact on them. If you take an ordinary person who doesn't have that kind of money and find that person a billion dollars, the person would be ruined. So you're making yourself wealthy here by thoughts of goodwill. In fact, as the Buddha said, this is a monk's wealth. We don't have much material wealth, but we do have the wealth of goodwill. So that whatever negative things come up from the past, the state of the mind is big enough to encompass them and not be knocked over by them. To the point where a lot of the stuff you hardly notice. So always remember that you're not just sitting here on the receiving end of the world, you're actually generating your experience. You're taking in potentials that come from the past, and you're creating your experience of the world. Every time you look, every time you listen, every time you deal with the senses in any way, every time you move the body, every time you speak, with every thought, you're a producer, you're a creator, you're a putter together. And this way you shape your life. This is one of the reasons why when the Buddha talks about harming yourself, it's not hitting yourself or killing yourself or anything. It's actually killing other people, stealing from other people, lying to them, having illicit sex with them, taking intoxicants. And you harm yourself in these ways. Because that part of you, that's the karma creator that's creating lots of bad stuff and that's going to have an impact now and on into the future. In the same way, you know, he said, when you harm other people, it's not that you go hit them or anything. You harm them by getting them to create bad karma. It's the worst thing you can do to somebody. Persuade them to do something that's really unskillful, because that karma becomes theirs then. If you hit them, that may be something in their past karma, but then now it's gone. Now it's been paid off. But if you get them to do something unskillful, that it's going to last for a long time. So remember, you're a karma producer, other people are karma producers. So starting with training your mind, learn how to produce good karma. Learn how to do it well. Because that's your only true possession.